One of the great things that Kerr has done with the Demi Ultra is they have moved the LEDs actually from inside the device to the tip. Uh, in a lot of devices on the market, we're using light guides and these light guides are made out of glass and the LED array was actually located down inside the curing device. And then you, of course you, you would snap these on. And the problem with that becomes it's not a really efficient way to transfer the photons. I mean, it's probably about as efficient as you can get with glass because we're all familiar with fiber optics and you know fiber optic uh, ways to transfer information over the internet and all that sort of thing. But when you're trying to actually get photons and get as many photons to the target as you can, it's just not nearly as efficient as simply having the LEDs right there at the restoration. So the minute the LEDs light up, they're right next to your restorative material and it causes the cure to happen. So you don't lose that, you know, that distance energy as it passes through the device. It actually is right there to cure from that standpoint. And that's a great thing because it allows you to take the full energy of the device and put all those photons directly into the material and get a full cure rather than having the photons travel a distance and drop off. So this allows you to get better depth of cure as well as a cure that you know you can do in, in five or 10 seconds depending on the shade of the material because you're not getting any kind of degradation of that output at all because the LEDs are sitting right on top of your restorative material. Uh, one of the other things that's really nice about this device from a standpoint of the heat transfer is this device has a very efficient heat sink in it. And because of that, you don't see slots uh, to allow the heat to dissipate. You don't have fans in this device that allow uh, any kind of materials, whether it's dust, um, you know, things in the atmosphere, in the operatory, or uh, any kind of disinfectant to get inside the system and cause problems, this system is 100% sealed. And because of that, the, the heat sink allows that you don't need a way to dissipate the heat because it's transferred uh, you know, to a heat sink in here which absorbs the heat away from the LED array and then allows the device to remain cool. Some devices um, that are sealed will have shutdowns and what they do is they monitor, they have a, uh, a chip inside the device that monitors the internal you know, temperature of it and if it goes over a certain temperature then you run the risk of either damaging the LEDs or damaging the device itself and so when it reaches a certain point it'll simply not allow you to hit the on button again. You know, it'll, it'll give you a delay until the device cools down, usually a few seconds. This device doesn't have that with the, the tip being where the LEDs are as well as the efficient heat sink. This device doesn't shut off. We've all had those situations where you're in the middle of a procedure and despite our best efforts with a rubber dam and adequate isolation, um, you know, you're seeing saliva rising, you're trying as hard as you can, you and your assistant, to make sure that you're not getting contamination. And if you go to hit the button and suddenly it's like, oh wait, I've got to wait five seconds, I've got to wait 10 seconds for the device to cool down before I can pull the trigger again, doesn't happen with this. So in those situations, you work more efficiently. I'm also into the efficiency aspect of it because let's face it, nobody wants dentistry to take longer. Patients don't ask for longer dental appointments. Patients want shorter dental appointments, more efficient dental appointments. So a device like this allows you to work more efficiently and allows the patient to have their procedures done quicker and they're out of the office and away from the dentist faster, which is a plus for them. One of the things that, that they've done with this device that I, I'm impressed with as well is it's important as the photons come out to make sure that you get a very uniform uh, you know, beam of light without you know, areas that are more intense than other areas. And what, what Kerr has done with the Demi Ultra is they put together what they call TIR or Total Internal Reflector Lens. And it works in a, in a way sort of like a prism where it takes the light and it blends it so that you get a very uniform beam output. Um, probably the easiest way to describe this is, you know, we're in Kansas City uh, here in my office, the home of barbecue. And when you, when you cook something or when you're barbecuing something, especially something you know, larger, 
Um, you don't want hot spots and cold spots on a grill. You want uniform heat so that everything cooks uniformly, evenly, and it comes out exactly the way you want it. And you can apply that same analogy to composites because as the light comes out of the tip, if there is an area that is you know, brighter or you know, off to one side, a little bit different, then you're not getting that same uniform input of photons into the composite and photons into the composite is what causes the whole process of, of curing. You know, your photo initiator is initiated by the photons. That sets up polymerization. You, know, you want uniform input of that light because that allows you then to get long chain formation of your composite which allows for greater structural integrity. It allows for you know, better marginal adaptation as the curing process happens. And long term, the stronger the composite is, the better restoration you have over time because the strong composite doesn't break down under occlusal loads and all that sort of situation. The other thing they've done is they have uh, some reflectors around the edges of this which helps focus the beam down. And one of the other problems that we've had with curing lights for years and years is that as the beam exits the tip, it just goes off in all directions. And people don't really think too much about that, but when you're trying to concentrate the photons onto a tooth during the curing process, you don't want photons on the gingiva, you don't want photons on the lingual surface, you don't want photons anywhere about where you're trying to cure. That's dramatically important. The Demi Ultra also has a feature that is built in to the device, requires no turning on, turning off or whatever, but it's called PLS, which is periodic level shifting. And what I mean by that is it cycles through basically 1300 milliwatts per square centimeter of brightness to 1100 milliwatts per square centimeter of brightness and then back. Uh, the other thing about the device is that the PLS is simply built into this device. There is no button on here for PLS. It simply is part of every mode. And, and one of the, the nice things I like about this device as well is it's very simple to operate. You've got an on off button, which is your trigger for curing. And then the button up above that allows you to simply cycle through um, 5, 10, and 20 second cure cycles. When you hit that button and you turn it on, the PLS is simply built in. It's not a feature that you have to select or deselect. It's always on. And so no matter which mode you select, 5, 10, or 20, PLS is always going to be part of that. And it's nothing you have to think about. It's simply on and go. LEDs are incredibly energy efficient. That's why you can get something with this footprint that will do 25 10 second cures. Incandescent bulbs, you know, your standard screw in light bulbs with a filament, are, are incredibly inefficient. And that goes with halogen bulbs that are, you know, halogen curing devices as well. Those devices output about 10% of their energy into light and about 90% of their energy into heat. So they, you know, they lose a lot of their energy as heat compared to what you get out of it with light. LEDs are not like that, but there is still some heat output. And what you want to be careful of when you're, you know, you're curing is you want to cure for an adequate amount of time so that you get a good cure on, you know, your composite, but you don't want to over cure and pump too much energy into the tooth. And then, you know, you, you run the risk of having pulpal sensitivity, but by keeping the heat signature really, really low going into the tooth, you decrease that chance of having any kind of thermal sensitivity causing damage to the tooth. And the idea of being very efficient with the amount of photons that goes into the restoration, you know, when you compare that to the heat, it's much better to have as many photons as possible and as little heat as possible, which is something that I think the Demi Ultra does in a very, very, you know, efficient and good manner. Um, and then you combine that with the other effect of, you know, being able to recharge it quickly and, and get those 25, 10 second cures out of it. It just becomes a device that you can reach for and not even think about, you know, is it efficient from a standpoint of the recharging as well as the efficiency of being able to put the photons into the tooth with less pulpal trauma.